Hello and welcome back to the spare time shop. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I've got a special project. I found this old bike and it's in a pretty good shape but it needs a little bit of love. So I'm going to take this apart, clean everything up and restore it without losing any of the charm it has. As you can probably tell there's nothing much special about it. But I like the shape of the frame. And yes, it has some issues with paint, uh, loose wires and even some rust. But that's nothing we can't fix. I even think the brand doesn't exist anymore, but that's what you get when you get a bike from 1980 something. So with pride I present to you the starting point of my adventure into restoring old bikes. I want to start from a nice blank canvas, so every part where I can see a screw, well that's coming off. Reflectors, dynamo, lights, everything. I'm also organizing all the parts by labeling everything with some tape. This will be useful when I'm putting it all back together in the end. I'm really striving for a very minimal aesthetic, so if I don't need a piece, it's not going back on the bike. I am willing though to keep the gear system, which is a 3 gear inner axle system from Sturmy Archer, a real classic, and it works fine so there's no need to make this bike into a fixie bike. The only thing I would change about it is the wheel that's on the frame. This guides the gear cable and I will try to make it follow a different path so it's not cutting through the frame like that. I'm removing the bricks and labeling them as well. And also removing the tires. I am using some WD-40 on any bolt that seems to be locked. It really helps to loosen them up. So there you have it, the naked frame. So now we're on to the metal works, my favorite part. I'm going to lose the carrier as it's very rusty and I don't very much care for it anyway. I'm also cutting all the hooks and clips that are on the frame, I don't need those. Except maybe for this one, I'll be using this to guide the gear cable instead of the little wheel from earlier. But, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. I also had to fabricate one extra cable mount from scraps. Since I don't have a sandblaster, the most effective way to remove the old paint and stickers seemed to be with a knife and sandpaper. But boy was I wrong. It took me three full days to get it all done. So I got the bike stripped down to the bare frame. So now it's time to sand it down, clean it up and then it's ready for paint. To even out all the dents and holes from cutting off all those parts, I used some epoxy filler. I still had to remove the chain, but luckily I found a small tool in the garage which allows me to punch out one link of the chain so it can come off. Now with the frame stripped and all the parts I don't want to paint taped off, it's time for, well, paint. So the first layer I chose a primer used for car bodywork. The second layer. I was gonna paint the bike black, but I changed my mind last minute to silver. That's why I used the very special paint used for car rims. Uh, it has a nice shine and should be excellent weatherproof. The third layer, reflective paint. And this is a little experiment of my own, because I wanted to make the bike as safe as possible. So for the final layer I covered the bars in this reflective paint. Not the whole bike, just the bars. It's tape removal time. This is the little piece I left untouched. Now 
Now I thought it wouldn't be visible, but here you can see the difference between the reflective paint and the classic silver. I'm cleaning all the aluminum and chrome parts, like the fenders, with some steel wool. The tires were pretty worn down, but the inner tubes were still okay, so I'm keeping those and only replacing the outer tire. So I checked the dimensions on the old tire and got a pair of new, brown ones. And the rims are of an excellent quality, as proven by this stamp. The handlebars weren't good either, so I'm switching them out for new ones that match the tires. Now that all the parts are cleaned up, or replaced, it's time for reassembly. The wheels, brakes and... Oh yeah, I swapped out the old dynamo lights with new ones that work on batteries. The whole reassembly was actually pretty simple because I paid close attention to when I took everything apart. The most tricky part would be the rear wheel with the gears and figuring out how far back it needs to sit in the frame to accommodate for the length of the chain. I actually went and bought a new chain because the old one was too short for some reason and I couldn't set the wheel back enough into the frame. Also this new chain had a simple clip to close it, so I don't need to punch out a whole chain link. And again, I'm very happy I labeled everything. I put in new brake cables and cut them to length. I didn't really have to, but I needed a new cable for the gears and I bought them in a set, so I thought why not. The gear controller is going back on and I'm feeding the cable through the new brackets. Now to set up these gears, I just followed the YouTube tutorial and got them working just fine. Now on to the final pieces. The chain cover, a new front light, which is retro style but also works on batteries, and the pièce de résistance, a new brown saddle. It's all done. Now I absolutely love this bike. It's, it's still retro, but it looks new. I left some of the original parts and I think it gives a lot of character. As for the reflective paint, it works great, but I do wonder if it will last. So um, I don't have anything left to say really, I just love it and I think it's a decent first attempt at bicycle repair and restoration. The whole thing, buying the bike and all the new parts, it cost me about 150 euros. And I feel like it's worth more now, so I'm really happy with that as well. If you have any questions about this project, please let me know and I'll try to help. But thank you very much for watching and subscribe for more DIYs and other videos.